Viking era, um, the woman of the household would have been responsible for the health of the whole household. And she would use the knowledge that had been passed down by her mother and her grandmother to help um, a person stay healthy or to treat um, some illness that they might have. But one thing that I'm working on right here is a cough medicine and I'm using Lovage, which is an herb, and I'm adding some fennel to that. And I also have some dried sage. So I'll add that as well. And I'll cook all of these herbs in wine, in my little cauldron. And that would be used as uh, a medicine for a chest cold. So uh, right now I'm doing something called cilantro and it's a way of making string. Uh, so this one is sort of a hand weaving. As you can see, so this is really nice because like I don't need a loom or any extra tools. I'm just kind of using my hands. Um, this is linen. Um, Vikings used uh, linen and wool usually for their sort of textiles. And so these pieces here would be something that's sort of uh, just spun. Um, with a drop spindle and then that's pretty that's not super strong it'll break uh, if you need to tie down something with it so I'm now sort of weaving together five different pieces of that that linen string to make this stronger cord um, but that's just a way of, uh, of making some cord. Right now I am making a pouch for all of our smaller items using a technique called null binding and it is usually used for making hats, mittens, and socks. And this particular stitch I'm doing right now is called the Oslo stitch. And usually our needles are made out of bone, wood, and antler. And the process itself is done just by weaving your thread, your, uh, your wool, through loops. Sometimes you can do it on your thumb. Sometimes people choose not to, but it's literally working up by picking up a wool pulling off the first loop off your thumb, twisting and going through to creating more loops. And you just kind of keep going round and round and then you'll eventually have your garment. I'm just weaving a, a strip of cloth. It's uh, wool material. This is uh, spun. The weights are there to provide the tension. Without the tension, the strings would blow every which way. So I've got them divided into two sections. So I have a gap pass the, the horizontal color through the gap and then you push it up with the sword. Once you've made one pass now I have to switch. The back ones have to come to the front. I'm gonna pull this rod that separates my <laughs> strings. That creates a new gap and then you come back through. And that's basically it. We just keep going back and forth and back and forth and that creates the fabric. Hi, I'm Caitlin from Caitlin's Kitchen and um, what we're doing today is showing you some different foods that would have been made during the Viking Age. There are many different uh, re recipes that we like. Um, this is a bacon, apple and onion, but usually at the Highland Gathering we make, we feed all of our hungry Vikings and believe me, you do not want a hangry Viking. So we make sure that we make enough for everyone. <laughs> We're here representing the warriors and hunters of the group. We'll have a weapons display of some, so you can pick up the weapons, pose with the weapons. We don't let you swing the weapons. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, so you can try on the chain mail, you can try on the helmets. I'll pose you with a sword, pose with us, pose with your friends. We call him the quartermaster because he's the one who helps me with the weapons display. He'll organize weapons, bring weapons to people. When I can get him from not playing with the other kids. So, <laughs> as Yaren would say, raiding's been fun and it's been profitable. <laughs> so.